degreeing in the camshaft is a little bit confusing. Um, it's a process that takes some time. Uh, I did not get it right the first few times that I tried it. Uh, so you really need to pay attention to the directions that come with the cam. Um, also it helps to definitely call tech support. Um, my description and way I'm saying things may not be the most correct way to say them, but these are what I've found to work. Back here with the 383 assembly, uh, it's a Chrysler 383 big block. Um, in previous videos we have assembled the short end of the block as far as the crank, rods and pistons. Um, this little video I'm going to show you my trials and tribulations of degreeing in this camshaft. And um, There's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to degree your camshaft. Uh, I'm going to give my little rundown of it and show you how I'm going to do it. Um, I picked up a ComCam's wheel. Picked it up on Amazon pretty cheap. Uh, it was about 20 bucks and then I got the socket for the crankshaft itself. Um, it's a nice little tool that allows you to connect a half inch ratchet. Um, it also has a nice uh, knurled wheel or nut here to hold the wheel in place. Uh, you can turn it and spin it in any direction you want. Um, nice little setup. Uh, we'll show you how to um, get it dialed into top dead center and show you uh, a couple little things. Uh, I fashioned a piston stop um, out of some unistrut and some bolts. Um, nothing professional but uh, it gets the job done. Piston stops are available online. Uh, you can purchase them. I figured I would just make my own. Uh, it's really nothing overly complicated. It's just literally something solid uh, that you need to stop that piston with and have it pretty reliable as far as not moving. Um, so I have some short unistrut since I'm an HVAC guy. Uh, took a piece of that, some a couple of the head bolts, uh, got them in place and some all thread with a nut behind it. So this gives us a, uh, a firm stop and it's adjustable. So. Um, it works, it gets the job done, it's crude, it's really not pretty, um, but it's effective and I'll show you how it's effective. We have a nice wire here, painted it yellow so you can see it a little bit better on the video. Um, I'll zoom in and get a couple different angles on how to do this. Um, it's kind of difficult to get it all in one shot, so um, I'll kind of explain as I go along. So right now I've got the piston stop set. Um, there's really no exact setting for it, just put the piston stop down into the bore um, and I found with the half inch ratchet being a bit short a nice long pipe um, helps to roll it over just a lot easier so what I'm going to do is roll this engine over and get the piston to come up to the stop so I'm going to I'm going to hold my I'm going to hold my stop up here and basically roll it and let that piston come in contact with it. Here's a better angle of it. You see top dead center um, which is the zero mark which we're trying to uh, uh, basically align the piston to the cylinder as far as the piston being all the way up at the very top with the crankshaft being centered in its stroke uh, in its rotation I should say. Um, so what we have here is about 11 and a half degrees. We have the piston at the piston stop. I'm going to roll this engine over so you can watch it and go to the basically the opposite side. So we're going to roll this engine over 360 degrees. Well not all the way but almost. And You'll start to see the numbers come down in the 30s to the 20s. We should stop right about 11 and a half. And that's where our piston stop won't allow us to turn the engine anymore right at 11 half so we've effectively centered this degree wheel now that it's top dead center is located with our degree wheel what I'm going to do is just basically remove the stop out of the way 
going to leave it in place in case we need to do it again or check it again. I'm just going to back off my adjustment rod and leave it hang there. That way the um, piston is free to travel up and down and we can rotate this motor completely over. Okay, now I have here a dial indicator that I picked up from Harbor Freight. It's not the world's greatest. It works, seems to be fairly repetitive as far as uh, checking the measurements. Um, I did buy the magnetic base. It's pretty inexpensive. Um, it works. Got to deal with a little bit of setup on it. Um, what I have it here is set up on top of the block surface with the magnet. I have fashioned a um, out of an old push rod. I cut down. I drilled a little bit of a of a uh, divot at the cut end at the very top. And I'll zoom in on it real quick here to show you where the indicator is. Um, that little divot just kind of keep it in place. Uh, they do have some spring tension on there from the dial indicator, um, and I've basically installed a lifter into the bore. And what we're going to do is check the number one cylinder intake uh, lifter. And we're going to watch this thing, and basically we're going to look at how much the lifter moves, and we're going to base our uh, readings on our dial wheel on the crankshaft based on the lift from the cam. Compare that to the cam card that you get with any kind of camshaft, and that'll kind of determine where everything is located as far as rotational degrees of the crankshaft. Okay, this camshaft is from Hughes Cams. It's a whiplash cam. Um, this is their part number on it. It's for a big block 383 Chrysler. Um, basically, what we're going to uh, basically check is our uh, installed center line on the crankshaft, and we're also going to check our cam timing at 0 .050 tap at lift. Um, we should have a reading on the degree wheel mounted on the crankshaft uh, using that pointer indicator that was previously set up for top dead center, and we should see this um, intake valve or at least intake lifter um, rise up to 0 .050 lift, and we should see that. Um, at that particular lift we should be at 13 degrees and then we're going to roll the engine completely over that lift over that cam lobe back down the other side to 0 .050 and we should see that the degree wheel on the front of the crank will be at 36. So trying to walk through this a little bit I did this a few times it was very con not very confusing but it was confusing to me so that's why I'm making this video it's it might help other people but um, what we're going to do is we're going to watch this dial indicator. Um, I'm going to roll this over and then show you the different indications on the wheel. So first things first, we're going to roll this engine over and get this dial indicator to 0 .050, uh, rotating the crankshaft clockwise as you look at the front of the block, which is normal rotation of the engine. So this is the first thing we're going to do is roll this engine over, <clears throat> start to get that intake lobe to lift on that lifter. And again, using a long bar really helps to um, make this rotate a lot easier with a lot more accuracy on the dial indicator to make it move real slow. So what I'm doing is going to get this dial indicator to 0 .050. So this is, this is the rotation of the crankshaft as the piston's coming up to the top of the stroke and the valve is going to start to open. So we're on the opening side of the cam lobe. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to check our degree wheel and see where we are as far as the crankshaft rotation in degrees on this particular lift at 0 .050 and compare it to the cam card. Okay, this is the intake lobe degrees. We're looking at the, cam, uh, the crankshaft wheel. Um, we can see that the indicator is right about 11 to 11 and a half degrees. Um, so we're going to reference the cam card. The cam card showing that this valve, we should be at 13, but we're about 11 and a half. So we're a degree and a half off. Um, I can't say I'm overly concerned with this at this point, 
we're going to roll this engine over and see what happens when we go to the closing side of the valve. Okay, so we're back at the lifter at the dial indicator. I'm going to continue to rotate the engine in a clockwise rotation front of the crank, which is normal direction. And we're going to watch this dial indicator go up. And then it's going to fall. So we're at the top of the lobe right now, and we're going to start going back down the lobe. One, two, three. I'm counting the passes over zero, so I know that this particular stroke is going to be the last one. So we're going to come down to 0 0.050. So we're coming down the ramp of the cam, and we're going to stop at 0 0.050. This is going to give our closing point of our intake valve and we're going to again check it against the degree wheel up front. Back up front on the closing side of the intake valve, which this cam specs out as um, at point .050 as a closing point of 36 degrees. And as you can see, we are right about there. We're about 36 to say 36 and a half. Um, so we're about a half a degree off roughly. Um, I don't think it's really all that bad at this point. I think what we're going to do is do the calculations on it and see where we have the center line. And I'll show that to you on paper. Came back here, I'm doing the math on this um, cam installation as far as uh, checking it. Um, what we have here uh, is we're going to basically take our intake opening degrees and we're going to add that to our intake closing degrees which in the video we're showing about 11 and a half and 36 and a half. Um, what we're also going to do, and this is in their instructions, is you take 180 degrees, um, basically is from the bottom side of the camshaft, from what I gather, is some of this calculation comes from. You take the 180, you add it to these two degrees, <clears throat> you come up with a total of 228 degrees. Now this 228 degrees, you're going to split in half um, which is basically cutting the circle in half if you're looking at a circle. Um, the 228 degrees of this measurement we're taking, we're cutting in half, which gives us 114. Um, now, 114 is the center of that particular cam for that intake lobe. And what we're doing is then we're going to subtract from 114 the center line of the top of the intake lobe. So basically we're taking 11.5 and subtracting it from 114. So you take 228, divide it by 2, you get 114. Take the intake opening degree, we're going to subtract that from 114 to get 102.5. So 102.5 is our installed center line, which on the cam card is 102. So we're about a half a degree off on that installed center line for this camshaft.